Good morning. We're here for the one-year Bible study. We're on August the 22nd of 2015. We're doing um, this Bible study. It's a 365-day version of an Old Testament, New Testament, a Psalms and a Proverbs that we read every morning. It takes about 15 minutes to read it, and then we get together each morning, and we uh, discuss our, our day's readings together. Um, this is our first time to be live on Facebook. We're going to experiment with that and see what God does with that. So uh, if you're joining us, we appreciate you being here and appreciate those of you around me being patient with me. But we're reading in Job. Um, our first day's reading was yesterday in Job. So today it's Job chapters 4 through 7 that we're um, reading about. So this is where Job's friends come into play and you know, Job is suffering, and I just was kind of struck with just a couple of topics about this, and we oftentimes are asked, or we even ask, you know, why do good, bad things happen to good people, and I feel like Job is one of the best explanations in the whole wide world. I believe that this is part of the reason why God did this for us, why he allowed Job to go through what he went through. There's many, many, many more reasons, but, but Job... You know, God told the enemy, God told Satan, what about my man Job? He's innocent. Um, that what, a, what an awesome way for God to talk about us. And yet he allowed um, the enemy to strike Job and to come against him, and he lost a lot. He just lost an awful lot. And so this is, this is a conversation with his friends. Um, it's pretty famous. <clears throat> um, about what took place, but in my mind today, it's as we read this book of Job, it's a reminder that bad things do happen to good people, but God is still God. And and just briefly going to the end of this book, you know, that's more or less what God says. You know, Job, were you there when I formed the earth? Were you there when I hung the moon and the stars and the sun in the sky? Um, there are times in life when, um, oh my goodness, Linda Gardner's on with us. Linda, I love you. And Cameron's on. I love you too, son. Wow, Jan and Nunley. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is going to get me so. <clears throat> I, can't, I can't watch. <laughs> but anyway, um, God is God. And who are we to question our creator? The creator of everything out there. Um, he knows, he knows all, he knows what's best. He, he gives us his word. I mean, inside of this book are promises after promises, after promises, after promises of his faithfulness to us. And it's not just faithfulness to prosperity. It's not just faithfulness to blessings. It's not just faithfulness to love, although it's all those things. It is all of those things, but it's faithfulness in the times of trouble. It's faithfulness in our struggles. It's faithfulness uh, above any kind of faithfulness that we could ever, ever imagine. Um, God is faithful, and God was faithful to Job. He's faithful to us, and uh, it's a good reminder for us not to question God, that it's not our place to question God. It's our place to love God, to hear his voice, to obey what he tells us. And um, it's also a reminder for us about our friends and who we hang out with. Um, we need to be very picky about who we let in our inner circle. Very, very picky. God will give you the inner circle friends he wants to be family with you, the chosen family, not blood family. Um, we don't get to cho choose. And there's Shadonna. Yay! I'm just so thrilled, but, but God will handpick um, the inner circle friends that we should align ourselves with, and we want, we want to be equally yoked with our friends, and I'm talking inner circle. We have an inner circle that when the times get, get tough, I, I love the story of Moses. Uh, God told Moses to send his army out and to fight this war. And as long as Moses had his arms up, they were winning that war. But when Moses' arms got tired, they were losing and his men were dying. And so his closest inner circle came to him and held his arms up for him. 
And that's a picture of us when we're down and out. There's, there's times when, when we can get so down, we can't even pray. And when we can't pray, we pray one for another. That's what we do. And, and we want like-minded individuals praying for us uh, and, and praying the prayers um, that, that will help us. And um, Job, quite frankly, his friends, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure those are the things I want said to me when I'm sick and think I'm on my deathbed. Um, it's just a good picture for us. Um, God will guide us, and God puts the right people around us all the time. And and I want to just kind of digress for just a minute. This is Monday morning, and it's been a few years ago. I worked in the Postal Service for many, many, many years. My first career was at the post office, and on Mondays, we deliver two days' worth of mail. So the volume was double on Mondays, and, and there just you know was this uh, culture that Mondays were hard. Um, the difference probably is that we were in the postal service delivering two days worth of mail versus now I'm not working for the post office. And God pointed out to me one day that that, that attitude about Monday still prevailed that Mondays are hard. Um, and so I, I got to watching on Facebook just a few years back, the people that would start on Fridays posting about, Oh, how I dread Mondays. I dread Mondays. And so God at that point in time, um, reminded me that every day is a gift. It's his gift to us and that we ought to cherish every day. I mean, there's so many that didn't wake up this morning. Uh, every one of us has lost loved ones way too soon. Um, you know, I lost a 19 year old uh, cousin not too long ago and, uh, or 21 year old cousin, not too, regardless, it was way too young. And have, I've lost a 17 year old niece. Um, Every day is a gift. We're not promised tomorrow. And so he gave me some terms to start using to speak life. Magnificent Monday. So you'll often see me post about it. I talk about Magnificent Monday. Uh, terrific Tuesday. Wonderful Wednesday. Thankful Thursday. Fabulous Friday. Super Saturday and sweet Sunday. Because if I, if I counter what I'm thinking about Mondays with my words, if I'm waking up, oh, it's Magnificent Monday, then there's no room for the negativity. I want to go just a little bit deeper, though. Something that I felt in my spirit over the last few weeks, not necessarily on every Monday, but I noticed it this morning as I sat down getting ready to do this um, telecon this morning. There was just a battle inside of me. It was just a whether it's a weariness, whether it's a, I'm not sure. It, it, I just know that there's a spiritual warfare around Monday mornings. And I wanted to encourage us to battle that, that, that we need to change our thought process about what Mondays mean, about what God has in store for Mondays, and, and do away with a spiritual warfare. And I, I mean, if, if you're joining me on these videos, all I ever share with you is my journey. I mean, this is what God's speaking to me. And, and um, I just try to be as transparent with you as I can that I know on Mondays, there's, there's something about Mondays that I'm going to dig into. I'm going to dig into the word a little bit more, but I absolutely want to overpower that, that Mondays from here on is I declare is going to be my most blessed day. It's going to be the best day. It's Magnificent Monday, and I really do mean Magnificent Monday. I wanted to share that this morning. So join me in that. Join me in that, that Mondays is not to be dreaded. It's a special gift that we have. We'll move into the 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're reading uh, uh, verses 18 through 40, and it starts right off. This Paul is the author of the Corinthians. He's writing to the Corinthian church who was struggling. You want to talk about corrupt churches, problems in churches, bad things happening inside of churches, bad things that gives going to church a bad name. It was all happening to the Corinth church. Paul founded this church himself. He had gone, he spent more time with the Corinthian church when he founded it than any other church. He had laid a solid foundation of Jesus Christ to them when he formed that church. And yet they were struggling in all areas. Um, and so these letters in the Corinthians are his attempt at helping them and speaking to them. And, and I encourage you to read the Corinthians. In the Corinthians, we just got through reading the love chapter that explains what love is. Um, it, it, 
Paul gives us some very specific instructions for just doing life, doing life with one another, and certainly doing life inside of a church. There's a divine order. Today's readings are about divine order here on earth. But divine order is not legalism. Divine order is not religion. Uh, I don't have a religious God. I have a holy God. I have a loving God. I don't have a religious God. And I no longer live under the law. The law has been fulfilled. So the law is relevant. It's been fulfilled. But I'm not, I'm not under legalism. And we're not under legalism. And reading these scriptures is where the freedom comes. So in today's reading, he's talking about spiritual gifts. Uh, he starts right off saying, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. More than all of you. He was talking to an entire church. The Corinthian church was very large. And he was telling them that I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. He talks a lot about the spiritual gifts. So spiritual, and he talks to, in today's reading about what are spiritual gifts for. It's for the edification of the body. There's gifts that will edify ourselves to keep us built up so that we can fight off depression, we can fight off anxiety, so that we don't have to live a life full of worry and, and stress. Um, but, but if we are in divine alignment with our Father, all is well. And so he encouraged us in the Corinthians today to make sure that all is in order. And when you're not sure what that order is, just read. That's one reason why I do a full Front, front cover to back cover reading of the word every single year. Not because I have to. It's simply because I want to. I want to know my father's heart. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. And if I want to know who my creator is, then he's given me his book that I can read. That will help me with that. And then Psalms is Psalms 37, verses 30 through 40. So here, here we are. We're reading Job. And it's all about the words that a friend speaking to Job and then the Corinthians. And it's all about the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues. And it starts right off in Psalms 37, 30, the mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, which is exactly what we do when we're speaking in tongues. And his tongue speaks justice. I love this. I mean, the first time I'm live on, on Facebook, but that is what is so cool is that Somewhere in, in the 1980s, a group of people got together and said, okay, let's make this one-year Bible study. And we're going to take a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament, of Psalms and Proverbs, and we're going to put it together and we're going to publish a book. And then so many times as we've been doing this since last year, uh, the readings that day just fits. Today is one of those. It, it's about our words in Job. It's about our words in Corinthians. And then the Psalms is all about our words. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of this God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. See, that's what's so good about reading from cover to cover every year, not because we have to, not because it's a religion. I've missed some of my readings this year. Um, I'll miss some readings again. Uh, um, but when we do this and when we get to know who our Father is, and we take this to supplement our prayer time. It's not to replace prayer time. Our Father loves the sound of our voice. But when we, when we are faithful in doing this, God is so faithful. And then we get promises like this that my steps won't slip. I'm not going to slip and fall. His steps do not slip. The wicked watches for the righteous and seeks to put him to death. We have enemies out there. Sometimes our greatest enemy is simply ourselves. But there's enemies out there. And the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we have to be armed and ready to do spiritual warfare, to maintain our rightness with God, not because God expects us to do anything. It's a free gift of grace from him, but simply to battle the enemy. And the enemy, most of the time for me, is myself, my own flesh. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he is brought to trial. We're not condemned. When we're believers, there is no condemnation in Christ at all. We're not to feel guilty. We're not to feel ashamed. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. 
I have seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree, but he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Though I saw him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. We have a future. I mean, I love Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, um, for I know the plans that I have for you, Shadonna, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future, um, not to cause us any harm. And then here it is again in the Psalms, for there is a future for the man of peace, but tra transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. Our enemy shall be destroyed. And the quicker we start believing that, the quicker his power is no more in our life. The only, in it, only power the enemy has in our life is the power we give him. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 21, 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with evil intent? Um, the Proverbs is our daily instructions. There's 31 Proverbs. There's 31 days in most um, months. And I'm just so tickled that you guys would join us on this magnificent Monday. And so we'll get together on Terrific Tuesday. Um, we'll chat tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Love